Hey everyone, welcome to the studio and I have got another exciting kiln opening happening. So in this kiln we have got a lot of fun stuff. I have got some tests of some Mako glazes. I have never used Mako glazes before so we are going to try them out. I don't even know what they're going to look like but I got a couple in here. I also got some Amico glazes which I do use a lot. Some Clayscapes glazes, some of my own glazes. I'm going to have a line of glazes coming out. You know I have my Chun glaze already available. But I'm going to have a line of five more glazes coming out in 2020 and those will be from Clayscapes Pottery so you could get those glazes. But in here is a preview of some of those in this kiln. So you know you can't get them yet but you can see them. Also um, my line of designer underglaze transfers is coming out November 4th. I am so excited. I've been working on these for months. I've got four new designs and I have some tests of them in this kiln as well. So you can't get them yet unless you're watching this after November 4th. Then by all means go get them and those will be available through Sanbao Studios and that's ChinaClayArt.com. That's their website. I don't sell them. I just design them and then they sell them. So I'm pretty excited. Now I'm going to let you know that I film these for YouTube for ClayShare.com, my website, and also I film these live on my Facebook channel. So if you go to ClayShare on Facebook, you can watch these live when kiln openings happen. And if you don't know when they're happening, well, follow ClayShare on Facebook, and then you'll get notifications when I'm going to have a kiln opening. I usually do two a month. Um, this is the first one I think I've done in October, and it'll be the last because it's towards the end of the month, and I'm just not going to be able to glaze everything and have another one before. October's over. It's just not going to happen. There's five days left. I can't do it. So I'm really excited to share this with you and just keep in mind this is filmed live so there are comments coming in and questions and if you have a question of course put it here in the comments and I'll get to it. I'll come back and read it and I'll respond but if you want to be part of the interaction and the fun of the live broadcast then again check out the Facebook broadcast. That's really fun and then you can watch it here as well because this is filmed in 4K HD the one on Facebook is just done on my iPhone. That's good, but it's not 4K HD, is it? I mean, you can see every bit of the glaze here in this video. So, all right, that's enough talking. Let's open this kiln. I've got a cup of tea and my little petal mug. Uh, newest class on tv.clayshare.com, and you can also watch it on the app. If you don't have the app, go to your app store and search for Clayshare, and then download the app, and you'll have it. I have an app. That's right, I have an app. I'm, I'm just still tickled pink about the fact that I have an app. So check that out, gorgeous, right? All right, so we are gonna unload a kiln. And this kiln has a lot of goodies in it. It's got a couple classes you're gonna get sneak peeks at, some pieces for future classes. Hi, happy Sunday to you all too. It has my new line of designer underglaze transfers, which you cannot get till November 4th, but that's in there. And then it has some tests of some Mako and some Amico glazes. So I'm pretty excited to open this up. It is very rainy, blustery autumn day here in Vermont. I feel like I'm still in Portland, Oregon, where I was last week. Thank you to everybody who came out to Georgie's open house, who I got to meet. That was awesome. You made it. I'm glad you guys made it. So I'm going to get another sip of tea, and then I'm going to pop this kiln open, and we're going to see what's happening in there, because I'm super excited. Mmm. So this is, I think this is the only the this is maybe the only kiln um opening i've had this month so let's open this up and see what's happening inside this bad boy i haven't named my kiln yet uh, you know usually i name my kiln just for fun if you all have name suggestions please send them to me because uh my last kiln was named trogdor some of you might know why i'm not going to go into it but if you know you can laugh along with me all right Ready, ready, ready? Here we go. And I'll walk you through everything that I did to the pieces so you will get a little glaze tutorial in this. It's not just, oh, look at this pretty pot. I'll explain what I put on it. So, yay, Tammy finally made it. And you love that mug. I love that mug too. So I'm glad you all are here. All right, here we go. First one up is indigo. This is indigo with eggshell wash, all from Georgie's. So this is this and Gorgeous day in California. I'm jealous because here in Vermont, it's kind of, yeah, it's fall. What can we expect, right? That's, you can't expect anything other than this. Uh, autumn foliage right here. 
and I think I'm gonna scooch this this way a little bit so this is the autumn foliage so you can get the the details of it on a leaf and this is eggshell wash on top so this is a coaster you know little leaf coaster and then this next piece this is one of my new glazes that's gonna be coming out cone 5 Frank yes this is cone 5 uh, I'll tell you my firing schedule before I go any further it is a one and a half hour preheat medium speed cone 5 firing but here's the thing my kiln runs really really hot so I do a negative 45 degree cone offset with a 10 minute hold at the end and that gets me a perfect cone 5 but it might not work for your kiln so I'm just saying that's what works for me all right first new glaze that we're gonna be having is called cobblestone and I I named it that <laughs> It's called cobblestone because I want to call it that. And this is on the Laguna 90, which is a dark clay. And this is my new holiday pattern rolling pin. Ah, it's so cute. I'm super happy with how this turned out. Lots of great texture happening in here. So the cobblestone is a warm gray. And on the edges, I put my spearmints, which the spearmint is going to be coming out too. So check that out. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, it's nice. It came out really good. I'm happy with it. This was made with a GR pottery form. Their square form. It's just a slab I draped on top. The little foot thing. I think I've done videos of this on my Instagram. Just some quick little little videos there. So that's our first top shelf in the kiln. What one? It's actually half shelf. Half shelf down. So we've got um, like like I don't know, eleven more half shelves to go. But we'll get there. So, um, Clayscapes will be carrying my new glazes, but probably not until 2020. So I'm just putting it out there. You're seeing them now as a preview. I, they just agreed to make them and carry them next year. So if you are like, ah, I gotta get that, and you're watching this video, um, you can't get it today. But if you're watching it in 2020, you might be able to get it. And I did a mug to match, so... Uh, and this is in the southwest pattern right here and I'll put it up a little close so I am filming this those of you on Facebook who are watching me I am filming this also for YouTube and Clayshare in 4k HD so that you guys will have it there as a reference as well so this will go up on Clayshare this video and it will go up on my YouTube channel as well so cobblestone and spearmint together are gorgeous on a hand-built mug so yay yeah I love that that gray that warm gray you know it's not a cool gray and it's not a celadon so it's not it's actually not translucent it is an opaque glaze but it still shows your texture which is really important got a lot of good stuff here I'm kind of holding back because all the good stuff's on the top here's the cone pack we are firing to cone 5 so let's just talk about our cone pack right here for a second. So when I make my cone packs, we have our guide cone, the cone we want to get to, our target cone, and our guard cone. Guide, tar target, guard. Guard lets us know we went too far. This one right here, the guide, lets us know we're getting there. And this right here is cone five. So that's perfect, right? Um, is that cobblestone on the inside of the mug too? It is, but it was over dipped with spearmint. Spearmint ran down a little bit, so we got um, a little bit of that in there. So it's it's working well. So Jill says the blue angels are currently flying over her house. So you won't be able to hear me. <laughs> it's what you're saying, right? So we're gonna put that, actually let's keep this out because I want to write the date on that so I know, just so I can keep track of my firings. And then, and then we get to the good stuff, darn it. I. I forgot when I loaded this kiln. All right, Smoky Merlot. Someone was just, Rich was actually asking about this. Um, two coats of Smoky Merlot on the outside with iron luster on the inside. I know that cone pack came out perfect, 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 perfect. So this one, and then I've got another. This, these are both Amico. So these are both from the Amico line right here smoky merlot 
with iron luster on the inside. Uh, two coats on the outside of this mug here because I wanted the texture to show. You know, you'll lose the texture if you go um, if you go too heavy with the with the glaze. And three coats on the inside. And then this one right here. This one is deep sea amicocelodon with seaweed on top. <gasps> oh, I love it! I love it. Look at that. Oh my gosh, right? So good. Now, this pattern is my Moroccan tile design, and this one is the Southwest. Both gorgeous mugs. Nice, hand-built little mugs. They're kind of like the old school diner style mug, you know, just a really nice mug. Hey, 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 Linda's here, hi. So how do you find the opening on the app? So this kiln opening won't be on the app till probably tomorrow. It'll be listed as a class. We're gonna start a new category of kiln openings. I've got two others from past kiln openings that we're gonna put up there. We were not sure. You know what, I wanna put these back here. I feel like these are so awesome. They need to be here so you all can see them in the background, right, and stare at them. The seaweed is a potter's choice glaze, not a celadon. That was on top of that deep sea celadon. So the deep sea is a celadon, that's the blue, and then the seaweed's on top. The seaweed runs like crazy, so just keep that in mind when you're using it, because it could run. Okay, these are a class I'll be filming this week. It is a two-for-one class. It is the snowman and Christmas tree luminary. You can make either or. I will have the templates for this up as well. It's a really simple, fun little class, and you put your little votive or tea light in the back, and then you have your light coming through. And so Nikki says your pottery teacher said you should watch my understanding glaze videos. Yeah, because I'm explaining how to understand glazing. I mean, I think for a lot of people, there's, you know, I, I did get my undergrad in ceramics, so I do have an art degree, but you don't need an art degree to glaze and you don't need an art degree to make pots, but um, it's helpful if you want to understand glaze chemistry, you know, but I'll teach it to you, so you just need me. You don't need, you don't need to go back to school for that. You just, you just get me. So right here is Georgie's Sand and Surf Interactive Pigment Applied First, wiped back, and then their super clear glaze on top. That's this Christmas tree. Now for our snowman friend, this is the autumn foliage with the eggshell wash on top. So that gives us the matte. So Teresa, what have you missed? It's okay, you haven't missed too much. So two options, and in the class I actually show you how I glaze them. So uh, if you're watching this now and you're like, but I don't think I'll remember what she glazed it. You don't have to, I'm gonna, I filmed it. I filmed it for you, so you'll have it. So you don't have to worry at all. It's there, you just, but the class isn't up yet. So I filmed it, but it's not, it's not been edited and processed. It usually takes a day to film a class, another day for editing, and a day for processing. So it's like a three day wait. So when I say, oh, I'm filming a class, you gotta wait like three days. I'm sorry, but that's just time, right? I can only do what you can do. Uh, that's that cappuccino cup everybody wants to see, and I'm not gonna show it yet. <laughs> I'm leaving it in there. Uh, my jungle or monstera leaves right here. This mug, oh goodness me. This one is so good. I had to move the camera. So I put my chun on top. That's what's on top. And look at that gorgeous leafies happening right there. Mine are the best because that has the chickens in it, my glaze classes, right? Everything's better with chickens, right? So this uh, is the black, with, and then my chun on top with the jungle. It's got some monstera leaves and some other leaves on it. And then this is the jungle one in green because I thought it would be really fun to do a green version. And the glaze on top and inside is again that deep sea. And then I put the seaweed on top. So I don't think the camera is really picking up how gorgeous this combo is. I know, jungle love, it's driving me mad, it's making me crazy. That's me, yeah, you, you will get singing. You get singing with me. <laughs> it's available in black, green, and blue, but not red. 
only my my folk art birds are available in the red. Now I fired a cone five. Jessica just asked another Jessica. This is my 70s inspired wallpaper pattern and it's a little intense. There's a lot going on in this one here. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of detail and stuff and then the chun on the top and just the chun on the black creates this really neat effect. So I'm loving it. You didn't know if I knew this song. My, my, yeah, my mom educated me on good music, so yeah. <laughs> Do I have pinholes? It's not pinholes. What's happened is I went crazy thick, and when you go too thick, you get a little, it's not really crazing, but it pulls away a little bit, so I have a clear glaze on underneath, and then I have the chun on top, so you can actually see the clear, the, you can see the shimmer, the clear is there, but the chun has pulled away because I put two dips of chun on top of a clear, which is three coats of dippable glaze. I know better, but I did it because I was like, oh, I really, really want a lot of chun. Don't make it too thick. You're a Steve Miller pint. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. So this one, the chun has absolutely no issues and it's fantabulous. So we'll look at this gorgeousness. The black, this is my folk art birds, or Scandi birds, we're calling it. Or I'm calling it, I guess. Doot doot with chun inside, outside, and uh, my signature on the bottom. But nice, right? It's so cute, so cute. And I just went with clear on the outside, and then I dipped the chun on top. You gotta be careful when you're putting too many layers of glaze on. You, you could get some areas where it tries to pull away a bit. So just keep that in mind when you're glazing because that can happen. Yeah, this one is my, I don't know. There's another one I'm gonna show you might be my favorite. I don't want to say that. I, I don't want to say, um, I don't want to say this one's my favorite. And then there's another one and it's like, but that one's my favorite too. So I'm trying to line this up so that you can see the kiln and, and the pots. Okay. This is the other one that I can't decide if it's my favorite or not. This is the mushrooms. Oh goodness. This is the green mushroom. And my clear glaze is zinc free, Michelle. Yes. But the chun is not zinc free. There is zinc in the chun. So it's the 2167 clear. Yes. Yes. That's the glaze that is on first. And then the chun on top for that other mug. And sometimes chun, you gotta be careful, right? Well, I have a class on how I did what, Hortensia? How I make these, how I put the transfers on? Yes, I will. I will do that. So the mushrooms, the uh, glaze again is Deep Sea from Amico Celadon with their uh, seaweed on top. I love the way the seaweed and that Deep Sea work with the green. Cute, right? The, the chun blued, the chun the chun is very cute. So these are the two mugs. I think, are they all, the only two mugs I have in here with the transfers? The, um, the transfer showed up when I was in middle, uh, the middle of glazing my pieces. And I hadn't planned to put them on mugs. These had other plans. I was gonna do more Mako tests, but the um, transfer showed up, so I had to use them. There was no option. I mean, what are you to do? Uh, new, new transfers show up you got to go ahead and use them. All right, we're going to put this in the back here. I've got a little ro I've got little rows. I feel like I need a table closer though cuz that's that's a little too far away, right? Um a little class I'm going to do a little quickie clear glaze not leaf glaze. <laughs> I know I think it's a t it's a toss up for me what my favorites are if it's going to be the folk art birds, which I think I'm calling scandy birds or the mushrooms. I'm not going to talk too much about these guys, but you can just see what they are. <gasps> oh, there's three here. Yes, there's a class on this. It's great for the kiddos, a fabulous class, or just really great little stocking stuff for ornaments. And can you use the transfers on earthenware? Yes, you just glaze over them. They'll be fine. And Georgie's does not have my Chun Blue. That's my, very, my own that I invented. So you get that only from Clayscape's Pottery, or you make it. You can make it. Could you make your own glaze? So we're not going to talk about the little gnomies. We're not going to. We're not going to talk about these. But this one's my favorite. Just saying. 
That's my favorite. Shh, it's a secret. I'm gonna hide them. All right, now you all have to forget you saw that. Just, just wipe your minds. You can't remember those. No, you can remember them. I'm gonna film that class later this week. Uh, and then here. Ah, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even warn you it was coming. Here it is. The red one with the birds. Oh, it's so awesome. And look, there's a little heart inside because, because when you're drinking it, you'll see the heart and it's like love in the bottom. Where do I get the clear glaze? So my clear 2167 recipe is on clayshare.com under resources and you can make it yourself. If you don't make your own glazes, then here I'll show it to you all the way around. Am I making all, my mom wants to know if I'm making all seven little gnomes. Those are gnomes, not dwarves, mom. Um, but I did think about making like, yeah, we'll talk. <laughs> So I know the lovely thing about this, and I'm gonna grab the actual decal, if I can find it. Here, I'll leave this as a placeholder. Look at this beautiful cup while I dig through my, my little stash of decals. Um, so right here, if you look at this sheet, you can cut these little elements out. You can cut the heart, there it is right there. That's the heart right there. And the birdies, and the little flowers, and the flower here, and the tool up there, and whatever that symbol I drew there, because I just got a little crazy when I was making these. Um, so the thing is, I am going to be making like little earrings or something. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to be doing some stuff. I'll be, I'll be doing the stuff with them. But the red turned out gorgeous. This is on B Mix, so you will notice the clay is kind of creamy instead of pure white. If you want a really bright white and red or white and blue, um, make sure you use a porcelain, but this mug is one I wanted for myself for a while because I don't have a cappuccino cup in my house. So I made this ages ago and it's been sitting in the studio waiting, waiting, and finally, finally it's done. So you can still see the heart through my chun blue. It's not bright red, it's like a deep red now. So very happy with these. And it kind of has a Christmassy look too. And the other option is if you didn't want to put a chun or a glaze on the rim, you could do an underglaze in a red and then clear glaze the whole thing. And that would give you a red and white pottery look if you wanted that. It would be up to you. Entirely up to you. Let's put this, let's put this back here too. Let's put this back. I'm in, I'm in my big old rain boots today because it's raining. All right, next layer. So that was uh, only a couple layers, so. There's still, so much, there's still so much in this kiln. There's a lot in this kiln. <laughs> Put these away as we go. Next shelf down. So this kiln, I was glazing until 11 something Friday night. I actually came to the studio Friday morning at nine, filmed the class until two, and then started glazing immediately after filming a class. So that was a 14 hour day. That was a little intense, but it happens sometimes, right? Because you got to get stuff done. I deserve to give myself a present and keep that mug. I know. So I think, I think I'm gonna. All right. Little house number plaque. This was the demo piece I did at Georgie's open house. So if you were there, you actually saw me apply the Georgie's pigments to this. And it's the autumn foliage on the background. And then I used the winter storm on the border and on the numbers. So you can see that winter storm kind of changes a bit. And it has greenish colors, kind of coppery tones, and then indigo-y tones and stuff. So so you've just, Penny just asked, she just started mixing her glazes and what's a clear she can buy that's compatible to the 2167. Well, if you want a zinc-free clear, um, I know that Georgie's makes a zinc-free clear and I. I'm thinking the Clayscapes Crystal Clear Zinc Free, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, if Drew pops on, he'll let us know. And did I hurt my back? We don't want to talk about that. Standing for so long on a concrete floor, because that's my studio floor is concrete. It, um, I tell you, when I got done glazing, I really, really wished I had a hot tub and like 
a massage, but I suffered through and got up the next day and worked again, so it's all right. This right here. Have you heard me talking about Georgie, about the new, um, got to get myself back on track here, plaque packs, the new plaque forms from GR Pottery Forms. They, there we go. I'm so caught up in Georgie's. This is the cobblestone glaze with the spearmint and look at the texture, my Moroccan tile pin. Um, so Kelly wants to know why would you avoid zinc and that's a fabulous question. Why don't you want zinc in your clear glazes? Well, zinc sometimes eats away at your underglaze and these transfers are made out of underglaze. They're basically screen prints of underglaze on rice paper. That's really what this is. So if I used a glaze with zinc in it, possibly that zinc could eat away at my underglaze. So that's why we would, um, that's why we would use a zinc free clear. So that's, that's the little, you know, Susan, you're hoping to use the plaque pack this week. Well, we're giving away three five packs of plaque packs from GR Pottery Forms and that drawing is going to be on Wednesday. I'll be announcing the winner. So that will be October 30th and this is one of the shapes. And I've shown you all how to do these in my live at five broadcasts, but um, I'll do some, I'll do, I'll, do, I'll do something else. I'll do maybe a class or something. Yes, Frank, the cobblestone is a satin finish, but it's not a dry satin. You can see it has a beautiful luster to it. Oh, let me, I want to show this. This is super important. And this is why the clay you use makes all the difference. This is B-Mix, Laguna B-Mix. This is Laguna 90. Now, if we look at the two right next to each other and I can get the glare off, you'll notice that on the B-Mix where the glaze breaks, you're getting a lighter area. On the 90, you're not getting that because it's a dark clay body. So I feel like the um, B-Mix is possibly a better option for the cobblestone, but it still looks spectacular on the 90. So on a dark red, red clay, on a white clay, so just give you an idea. And then the spearmint on the rim of both of these. And Lenise, I make cobblestone. That's one of my brand new glazes that's coming out in 2020. You'll be able to get it from Clayscapes Pottery. I will have five new glazes. Spearmint is one of them. Cobblestone is another. My Oribe, which is a, a grass green glaze, which we haven't settled on the name for that. And then I have a blue. We um, have to figure that one out too. And last, is I have a, a raspberry glaze, but it's not really raspberry, it's not cranberry, we're just calling it berry. So maybe you guys can help me pick names, right? It's going to be exciting. I don't have any samples of the berry glaze right now because I have to mix a new batch up. The batch I have is really old and I don't want to use it because I don't want, um, I want it to be perfect, right? So we need to have a brand new bucket. So I just went and bought all the supplies to make a new five gallon bucket and it has two over two pounds of tin in that glaze. Tin is crazy expensive. I just got to tell you, I haven't bought tin in years. So, um, ouch, right? When you, when you go to buy something and one materials like almost $50 for two pounds of it, you're like, what? But this is, this is the thing, you know, we make our glazes, those of us who do, and that's what you pay for. It's expensive. Okay, more plaque pack pieces. So we have the, that was the larger kind of um, platter shape, like the oval one. This is the large rectangle shape. And then this is the small oval. Oh, glaze. Smoky Merlot from Amico with Iron Luster. Beautiful. And of course, I had to do something with that deep sea with the seaweed. Oh yeah, I had to do it. So these are three of the five different shapes from JR Pottery's plaque pack. And I will, after this is all unloaded and I'm, I'm done going through everything, I will take a photo of the plaque pack pieces and a lot of these other pieces too to put up so that you all can see them. Mug toppers. Got a, got a couple mug toppers just because if you're going to make a mug, why not use the scrap clay to make some mug toppers? Then that way you can be, I need 
a cup of something, right? You've got your you've got your cup of something right here, and oh, put your mug topper on. Kitty cats aren't putting their little paws in there. Bugs aren't flying into it. Plus, it's keeping your beverage warm. And also, um, one of our fabulous Clay Share family sent me a message saying another thing you might not know if you're doing herbal teas. When you put the lid on, the essential oils that are evaporating from those herbal teas are actually coming up and settling on the inside of that. So when you lift it up and all of that condensation runs back down into the tea, that's actually the essential oils from your herbal tea going back into your cup. So they're not flying away into the air. They're going back in the cup where they should be. So how cute is that set, right? So Sherry, you're gonna be, um, are the last signed with underglaze. So when I make, when I do something with a lot of texture, I stamp my signature on them. Same thing in the bottom of these. When I do bakeware, I usually sign. I did a, I did a video on signing your work and explain why some pieces I sign with my full name on underglaze, some I carve, some I stamp. Um, but yes, to answer your question, it was underglaze. Yes, it was. <laughs> All right. Um, so, so who was it that just said they bought the supplies to do mocha diffusion? I know, Rich, you were looking for that combo this morning and I've had two pieces with it. Sherry's going to try it. Right. You can use the topper as a coaster and I, that's exactly how I make my coasters. It's the topper and I don't put the extra little bit on the bottom, but you can double duty it. Why not? You, why not? You've already made it, so use it for both. So here we've got a sweater mug, Georgie's. Sand and Surf, you might have seen these before. I do these, this combo a lot with this mug. I love the Trinity knit pattern with the buttons and Chun on the inside, Sand and Surf pigment on the outside with their super clear. You could warm a cookie. You sure could, Frank. And if you have Stroof waffles, you could put them on top and warm the caramel inside those. Oh yeah, um, on my flight to Portland, there and back, two planes there, here to Chicago, Chicago to Portland, got Struf waffles on each flight. So I got two on the way out and then the same thing on the way back. So I ate four Struf waffles, and I hope I'm saying that right because it's not a hard word to say. <laughs> but this one, it came out perfect. And oh wait, we'll talk about signatures. That's how I sign pieces that just have smooth bottoms. Usually I just put a little underglaze and then I carve it in and I'll need to do a little sanding because there's a bit of kiln wash stuck right there, but not, not so much that it's a problem. Just, you know, a little, a little clean up afterwards. Not, not even a big deal. All right, more mugs are happening. Oh my gosh. Oh, I did do, ah, ha, ha. I did a dark blue mushroom. And this is something I really want to show you because when you're doing the blue, if you look at how bright, look at how bright this blue, Stroof waffles, they're Dutch. They're very good, I have to say. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. So this is the dark blue before you fire it. This is after. Look at how much it changed. Look at, it goes a true cobalt blue. So if you're looking for a deep cobalty blue, um, this is the color you want. It looks bright blue. Somebody commented on a post I put up. They didn't like the color before it was, like they saw it before it was fired. And they're like, well, the color's not me. And I was like, it hasn't been glazed yet. How do you know it's not you? It could be you. It could be you and you're throwing it away before you even see it finished. You're dismissing it before you even see the end result. So those are the super cute, sweet, oh my goodness. Um, I loved drawing these mushrooms. I, I usually draw in the evenings after I've worked all day in the studio and after dinner, usually from like seven to nine, I'll draw every night. And for myself or for new designs or whatever. And I drew this over, it took me like three nights to get this right. I loved drawing these mushrooms. Oh my gosh. Little tiny cute ones, great big ones, little polka dotty ones, striped ones. It was, it was so fun. Uh, well, mom, I'll keep that in mind. So my mom loves the mushroom one best of all. And I saw, I think Van asked when my transfers will be out. They will be out on the 4th of November, 2019. A little, a little sweater pumpkin. This is how I fire my pumpkins. 
I glaze the bottoms, I put them on the little stilt right here, and then when it's done, you just pop this guy off and then sand it down and it's fine. But that way I have a nice glazed bottom on my little pumpkin. And this is Georgie's Interactive Pigment in Autumn Foliage with Eggshell Wash. You, you probably are gonna be sick of hearing me mention that combo because I use it all the time. It is, it's my favorite, but the sand and surf with the super clear is kind of winning too. I'm loving that. We have a couple more tests. This is my new spearmint with the new blue glaze on top. So those are two new ones that will be available at Clayscapes in 2020. The spearmint on the Southwest pattern. So let's talk about it. This is a true opaque glaze. It gives fabulous coverage. It is smooth, beautiful, no pinholing, no crazing. It loves Laguna Bee Mix. But it does, you can see the texture, but it does hide it a bit. So you get a more subtle texture, not a so much standout popping texture with this glaze. And the glazes will be available in 2020. They will be available both in dippable or in brushable, your choice. So you can, if you're a dip and pour person, you can buy the glazes and dip and pour. If you're a brush on person, you can buy them and brush on. And I don't know if the camera can really show the awesomeness of these two colors together. I don't know. But the blue by itself is a really nice lavendery blue on the B-Mix. It's really pretty. And I, I still haven't named the blue. I was thinking like Mountain Lake, but I, I don't know. Um, I just call it blue <laughs> but we can't just call it blue we have to come up with something else but this this turned out really well happy with this combo too so well we're gonna we've got a little pile of mugs happening in the back and we're just gonna keep piling them there yeah it's a really pretty combo and then uh ooh, to do the mako or to show you the other glaze i'm gonna show you the other glaze you don't want spearmint too heavy no um you want it perfect right you want it to be perfect this is the last well not the glass because i don't have last i don't have the berry but this is my orabe and this was a cone 10 glaze that i made for years in my gas kiln and fired it and i wanted to bring it into the studio when i started doing cone five cone six mountain lake blue is what i was thinking fan i was thinking mountain lake blue and then this one is my orabe and here it is with the holiday mug, with the little kissing deer, snowflakes, cute, cute, right? And I put iron oxide on the rim, that's it. That's all that's on here. So what you're seeing is just the iron oxide. Now, this was a cone 10 glaze, and there is a way you can bring cone 10 glazes down to cone five, cone six. And this right here is one I did, and I have been using this glaze for about 15 years successfully, in production pottery. It's been in the dishwasher, microwave, no problems, no issues with crazing, cracking, pinholing, nothing. It's a good glaze. So it's an Oribe though, not a Celadon. So don't, it's, it's different. And it is really a cone 10 glaze that I brought down to cone five. Now, am I gonna call it Oribe? Are you guys gonna be able to remember Oribe? Or should I call it like Vermont green or grass green or something? because I love feedback and if you have a suggestion, then by all means, give it to me. There's, there's the inside view. And the Orbe is, um, when you go too thick, it has a bluish cast. When it's thinner, it's warmer. So just, just keep it. The, you, that's your favorite now. <laughs> it's beautiful for Christmas too, right? This is a dipped glaze, not brushed on. Vermont green. Uh, Debbie says leave it as is. The Oribe will be available with the other glazes. Yes, yes. And I know Clayscapes already sells a green similar to this, but it's not my Oribe, is it? So, Vermont Green Oribe. Um, Oribe is a Japanese glaze, and when you put it in a gas-fired kiln in a reduction atmosphere, you sometimes get copper reds coming out because it has copper in it. So sometimes you get red, you get some flashing. It's really, it can be a beautiful glaze. So Bonnie, I just explained. She asked, what's Oribe? It's a, a Japanese glaze. I think Oribe might be a region in Japan. So the glazes that come out of there um, 
were called orobe glazes. That's how a lot of Japanese glazes are. It's a, a specific glaze. We're going to put this over there. And then we'll get to the Mako. Mako. This. This this is a test of Mako um, brush-on glazes. This is their cone 5-6 line right here. I put the iron oxide first, then dip it into the green. Yeah, exactly. And you can do that with so like all celadons, orbes, any translucent glaze. If you put, let me grab it again. And I've got some plates with this. I think I got some plates with this on it too. So put the red eye. It's red iron oxide because I know someone's going to ask me what color oxide is it. It's red iron oxide, and I just thin it down till it's the consistency of ink brush it on and it does tend to flux a bit and run like it did right here right here on the deer head right there but that's okay that's what it does that's the nature of this particular glaze and then we have my stamp on the bottom and you can still see the the Christmas so these are um, Linda it will be available as a brush on no this is current this was dipped on right here because that's how I make it in my studio but when it comes out for clayscapes, they're going to make it as dippable and brush on. All my glazes will be available both ways because some folks don't want to brush. Some folks don't want to dip. That way I give you everything. You know, have it your way, right? Mako Stoneware Glaze. This is Lavender Mist with their Dark Flux on top. The Dark Flux opalizes a bit. Um, the inside is my blue, so that is my blue glaze on the inside of this, which it has a beautiful, like I said, it's, it's kind of got lavender-y tones, which matches this lavender mist perfectly. So my blue on the inside, lavender mist on the outside, dark flux on the outside to help it flux a bit, so you can see it. But it didn't flux as much as I thought it would. You like Jessie's Jade, Jess's Jade. All right, well, I'll take all the suggestions for names of glazes. Just tell me the color you're, you're talking about when you give me the name. And we'll have a naming contest. They're not coming out till 2020. You guys can help me name the glazes. I, I have been calling them certain things for years because I've been using them for years. And these glazes are all ones I have started. I started using these glazes that we're making available in... Um, let me go back in my head. 2007? Yeah, I've been using these glazes since 2007. Some of them a little longer than that, depending on the glaze, right? The Oribe was one I, I was using since, I think, 03. So, uh, they've had a lot of time to be perfected, and for me also to get to know them and use them. So, there'll be five new glazes, in addition to my Chun, at Clayscapes. So in 2020, I will have a total of six glazes you can get. All right, there is more of the of the Oribe. Oh, well, I used Georgie's Latte Glaze, and I gotta say, ah, I'm not so loving it. It's it's not a problem. We'll pull it out. Um, so these are the last two shapes in the plaque pack. They should all start with Jess. <laughs> How do you get a perfect glaze line at the bottom, Brenda wants to know. I wax the bottoms of my mugs, and then when I go back and wipe it, you just wipe it really carefully. So that's, um, that's just a little bit of practice. Oh, cornflower would be very cute for the blue, Catherine. That. Um, so I will... Drew, I know. Drew needs to get busy. Um, Penny's asking about the flux on that mug. Hold on. Mako makes... <laughs> Mako makes a thing called flux and it's available in light or dark you brush it on top of a glaze and it makes that glaze melt in flux a little bit more it makes it melt more and that's what's on top of this on the outside only the inside is my blue cornflower blue sounds kind of good for the glaze that's on the inside here so I will keep that in mind because maybe maybe that's what we'll do latte needs to be thinner you're telling me, look at this. So this was my uh, Moroccan tile design and it's pretty much all gone. You can barely see a hint of it with the latte and that's the two to three coats. And then this is it on top of Golden Sands interactive pigment. Put the pigment on, wiped back. And then I think I did 
three coats again on this. They're pretty, they're really pretty, but they're not what I was hoping for. I've got more with the latte in the kiln. We'll get there. Coyote has, a, so that's another interesting thing. Lorelei just said Coyote makes a cornflower glaze. I don't want to name it something that another company already has because I don't want any confusion. So that way when we say, uh, this is blah, blah, blah glaze, it won't be, oh, whose glaze is that? It, it'll be easy. All right, these are for a class and I'm not showing you. <laughs> there they are, there they go, bye, it's a surprise. Can you believe I did that? I never hide stuff from you guys. I share everything, but nope, not that. I'm keeping that a secret. That's, that's for me to know and you to wait for. <laughs> this is the Oribe on um, B Mix again with the iron oxide. So you can see when it goes a little thick, it goes darker. So it was a little thicker right in there. You see those little dark spots, but uh, it's still beautiful. All right, Rich, have a good day. So, <laughs> so someone was saying they use the latte and their pumpkin looks the same way. Yeah, that's, that's, I did not know it was going to do that. Um, obviously if I had known I needed to go thinner, I would have, but you know, what else do we have in here? We have got that blue. Oh, so this is a really good example of the blue on dark. So here it is. Here's my blue glaze on the dark clay. And let's get that mug because that was on, oh, do I have it by itself? I'm looking around the studio. I didn't do it, did I? Only on the inside of a B-Mix. So when you're doing this on B-Mix, it's a little lighter. See how much brighter it is, but it breaks dark. It's gorgeous when it breaks. Like really nice, right? But you gotta be careful if you go too thick. Do you see how the center is a little thick? You're not losing it yet, but it's getting close. It's, it's getting there. So keep, keep that in mind. Okay. Ah, so in here is a really good example of what happens when you first open a bucket of glaze and you mix it up and you think you've mixed it enough and you immediately dip something into it. And then you find out that, oh, whoops. Um, I should have mixed that again. So here's what I do usually. I'll open up a bucket of glaze, I'll mix that bucket of glaze, and then I'll let it set for a bit, and go back and mix it again before I use it. And so this is what happens when you don't do that. This was my spearmint on dark clay. Spearmint on dark clay, too thin. Winter blue, winter sky. I know I hid those from, so the things I took out of the kiln, I completely hid those. Those are, because here's the thing, I have got so many classes to film, that's down on the list, and if I show them to you guys, you're gonna be saying, when will the blah blah class? And I'll be like, I can't, I don't know. That's future, future. Um, so this is what happens when you go too thin with the spearmint. It's a little thicker here, because I dipped it, bloop, like that, and this is where, it's still kind of cool. Champlain blue, like Lake Champlain. Oh, that would be really cute. Uh, so what is the dark clay here? This is Laguna 90. And I actually have some Laguna 80 I'm gonna be using on, some few, on a few pieces. That is basically the same as the 90, it just doesn't have grog. This is a groggy clay. It does look very woodsy. If I didn't tell you that this was supposed to be spearmint, you would have no idea, nobody would know. It would just be for me, but um, I told you. So now we've got the Oribe on a little, a little baby tray. Cute, right? Lots of great detail. Kevin says, I'll have that tray. It's like an ombre, exactly. Blue number two. <laughs> is that what you think we should call it? Blue two. And here it is on a dish. So this is the set I'm going to show you. Okay, here it is on a dish. Look how cute, right? And then here's the mug. So they go together as a little, little breakfast set, right? And it just looks great. And then I did it on the back on the edge. So you can see all the way around. Yeah, I signed the plate that way, stamped the mug because the mug has texture on the bottom. Jesse's Jade, Jesse's Jade, 
We will see, but you can really uh, get a feel for this glaze and how it looks. It's beautiful. It really is. Um, very happy. It has a little bit of brown specks. There is, um, is there iron in this? There's not iron in it, but it does have a little bit of specks in it. The only colorant in this one is copper. That's all that's in this is copper. And not that much either. But look how sweet. So a little, a little very Christmassy set with the green, right? Very, very appropriate for Christmas morning, having some cocoa or cookies, or you could leave that out for Santa. And then I had to do some little spoon rests in the same combo right here because you need, you need that. That plate is the hexagon. I'm um, not sure which size it is. I think it's the second largest, third largest. I'd have to look, but it shrinks down to become a perfect size luncheon or breakfast plate once it's been fired. Um, you can measure it if you guys want to know what size that plate is. Oh, did you see? There was a kiln post stuck to the bottom of that shelf. We are so lucky that this didn't fall off and break anything underneath it. Because that's happened to me before. And then the very bottom, what do we got going down here? Oh, so these were test pieces from the Georgie's uh, open house. Can you uh, recap which of your glazes you have convinced Drew to make for us? Yes, I can. Um, Jess blueness, <laughs> the blueness. Let's check our cone pack because we're at the bottom. So there's the one from the bottom. Where did I put the one? There it is. And here's the one from the top. So I always like to check. I always like to check. Kiln pretty close, pretty close to the same. A little, a little hotter on the top, maybe. No, I don't think so. Looking at those, they line up really well. So good. Jesse's Jade and Chan Blue. I maybe, uh, so a lot of these glazes, um, I'll have to do some layering tests and we'll see. And you haven't even seen my berry glaze. It's this beautiful, like cranberry color. So we haven't even, we haven't even talked about that. All right, I'm gonna try not to fall inside my kiln. So here is the latte on a dish. I believe only two coats with the sand and surf underneath. And here's with the steel black under the latte. A little better, a little better result, but I really need to thin it down. I need to stop putting it on so thick. You can really see how the Georgie's latte is just a glaze that wants to be thick. So you're gonna have to remember that. Two, two coats, I have to remember that. Put Jess's name before the color because nobody else has it. That's a very good idea, right? And then this one I made actually at Georgie's doing the demo. So this is one of the little plaque pack, um, the new plaque forms in the square. And you can see the texture in there. And again, this glaze is sea foam from Georgie's. And it's a really beautiful glaze. Do I use witness cones four, five, six? I sure do, Chris. That's exactly what I use. And I'm firing to cone five. Yeah, because that's the temp I fire to. But all my glazes, I used to do cone six. So all the glazes that I'm showing you that are my glazes that I make myself were made intentionally to go to six, but they go to five so well. So it's not really a problem. Another coaster using the eggshell wash. And I believe this one here is winter storm. That's the Georgie's pigment. So we don't really dwell on that one. And then I have Spin art test tile. I got them home without breaking. I know, Carolyn. I was very careful when I packed my things coming back from Georgie's. So these are uh, Georgie's tie-dye line of glazes, and I do have a spin art class on how you can use them. This is the pistachio on first with the neon orange, the um, halo purple, and then the tidal blue. Those are the, the three colors I used to get to get this with it. It's really turned out really good and then the last thing is glazed way too thickly way way too thick way too thick you can't wait to fire your tile i i want to see it too you better share it so this one this platter 
I glazed. Now this is Laguna 90. We'll show the back first. There's the 90. And this is how I do my feet on big platters. We do two feet, right? And then the inside, I put the glaze on too thick. Have I seen much of a difference in my own glazes between cone five and six? No, I, I really haven't. And here's the thing that makes the difference with your glazes is the clay body you're using. You need to fire your kiln, your glaze firings, to the temperature that's best for your clay body. Laguna B Mix is a cone five clay. So as long as I go to cone five, there are no problems with it. This is the Laguna 90. It's also a cone five clay. It loves cone five. You can push it to cone six if you want to, but, um, but you don't need to. This right here was my holiday platter. It had little deersies all over it and it was cute, cute, cute. And you can kind of see them peeking through. Like it's a, it's a, let's pretend it's a winter blizzard and they're caught in the blizzard. It's a green blizzard and it's a spearmint green blizzard and the deer can't get out, but they're still there. So that's what happens. Too thick, but that spearmint, like uh, someone had commented earlier, you got to get the right thickness. It's like a foggy day, but it's good. It's a good platter. It's still completely usable. The glaze is good. It's just too thick. So what can I say? There's that. It's just how it is. So there's, there's the pots. Um, oh, we have to do our roundup. So um, we'll ha let's do our roundup of my favorite pieces from the, from the firing. All right, so that was a pretty awesome kiln opening. There's a lot of pots, I told you. And remember, these are filmed live. So if you don't like that format, you might not enjoy these videos, but that's just how they are. And it's a great way to learn. And you know, someone might ask the question that you had and I was able to answer it. And if there was a question you had that I didn't get to, Leave it here in the comments and I'll get back to you. Or you can always message me, right? And I do like to wrap it up with my favorite pieces and there was so many, I really can't pick. But I loved seeing my designs come to fruition and see them on a pot, especially this one with the little heart. So this might be my favorite piece. Although the mushrooms with my name on it, uh, you know, they're right there, Jessica Fun and Phillips. So cute, so cute. So these two were my favorite, I think, if I had to pick them, but I'm keeping this. This one's mine. Um, and then it was funny because there was uh, one I put back there with Smoky Merlot I love, but uh, it's not my glaze. So these are like my glazes, my decals, very much me. Now I have these decals in all kinds of colors, so stay tuned and you can get them. Thanks for hanging out here with me and I'll catch y'all later.